Subscribe to our channel for more videos. Cat on a Hot Tin Roof is a play by Tennessee Williams, first performed on March 24, 1955 at the Morosco Theater in New York and directed by Alia Kazan. This play is a tragedy, continuous with two intermissions, and revolves around family drama. The play is set over a single summer evening, the Pollitt family gathers, in the bed-sitting room of Brick and Margaret. To celebrate the patriarch's birthday at his mansion in the cotton plantations in the 1950s Mississippi Delta. And Old South's decline can be referenced through Big Daddy's looming death due to cancer. The play is set in the American South, where hot and oppressive weather is a common backdrop. The title serves as a metaphor for the characters in the play who are in a state of discomfort, restlessness, and tension. The characters, particularly in Brick and Maggie's strained marriage, are figuratively on edge, struggling with their desires and inner conflicts, which creates a palpable sense of unease and pressure throughout the play. A cat on a hot tin roof may appear calm and composed on the surface, but beneath the exterior, it is in distress due to the scorching heat of the roof. Similarly, the characters in the play often try to maintain a facade of stability and composure in their lives, hiding their true emotions. The title highlights the theme of appearances versus reality and the idea that what seems stable and tranquil on the surface can be fraught with tension and turmoil beneath. Cats are known for their agility and ability to navigate tricky situations, but even they can lose their footing on a hot surface. Similarly, the title suggests the fragility of human relationships and the ease with which they can become strained or damaged, as seen in the Pollitt family's dysfunctional dynamics. Act 1 begins in Big Daddy's estate mansion where Brick is taking a shower in a suite. Margaret starts complaining about Gooper, May, and then Brick himself. She thinks that Gooper and May only came to visit after learning that Big Daddy's dying so their no-neck monster children could inherit Big Daddy's wealth. She's not happy with how Brick stopped working, started drinking, and even hurt his leg trying to jump over hurdles at a high school track. But she still thinks he looks good, just like when they were a loving couple. She despairs that living with someone you love can be lonelier than living entirely alone if the one that you love doesn't love you to which Brick states I'm not living with you. We occupy the same cage. She wants Brick to sign a birthday card for Big Daddy, but he refuses. They argue, and Brick tries to protect himself with a small chair like a lion tamer facing a big circus cat. After a moment, they both laugh, but then Big Mama calls from outside. She shares good news, Big Daddy doesn't have cancer, just a spastic colon. Brick hides in the bathroom, not responding. Big Mama quietly asks Margaret if Brick is drinking and if she's making him happy in bed, implying it's her fault he's drinking and they are childless. Big Mama leaves and upset Margaret alone. When Brick comes out, Margaret reveals that Big Daddy actually does have cancer, but they're keeping it a secret from them until after the party. Margaret brings up Skipper, and Brick warns her to stop and that a man has one great good true thing in his life, I had friendship with Skipper, you are naming it dirty. She talks about how close Brick and Skipper were and admits to being with Skipper to feel closer to Brick. Margaret had called out Skipper on his intentions of yearning for something that was not perfectly pure. Attraction for Brick and in return Skipper first hit her but then slept with her to prove her wrong. Later, he turned to alcohol and died. An angry Brick throws his crutch, and Margaret hides behind the bed. Margaret tells Brick that a gynecologist in Memphis confirmed that she's healthy enough to have children, but Brick doesn't think they can have a child when he doesn't even want to be with her. Just then, the guests and Reverend Tooker, led by Big Daddy, come into their room. Margaret tries to give Big Daddy a gift from Brick, and this causes more arguing between Margaret, May, and Big Mama. Big Daddy hollers for everyone to be quiet. After Reverend Tooker finishes speaking, Big Daddy gets upset with him thinking he wants donations. When Big Mama defends the Reverend, emotionally sings Happy Birthday, and tries to stop Big Daddy from questioning Brick. Big Daddy turns his anger towards her suggesting that she's after his plantation. Everyone leaves to give privacy and she tells him in all these years you never believed I loved you? While she leaves the room crying, Big Daddy thinks to himself wouldn't it be funny if that was true. Later. Big Daddy asks to speak with Brick alone. He talks about how relieved he is that he doesn't have cancer so he will now take a mistress. He reminisces how once on a trip to Europe, he was disturbed by the starving poor and rampant prostitution, while Big Mama only shopped there. Big Daddy contemplates that a person buys and buys and buys in the hope that one of his purchases will be life everlasting. 
He attempts to communicate with Brick about his issues with drinking and exasperatedly asks why is it so damn hard for people to talk. He grabs Brick's crutch and knocks him to the ground to coerce him to reveal the reason behind him being an alcoholic. Brick says that he drinks because of his disgust for mendacity, but ultimately, he divulges that Skipper admitted his love for him over the phone, and Brick hung up on him. He cannot entertain the accusations of impropriety by Big Daddy in his friendship with Skipper which he thinks is true and pure. He also tells Big Daddy that he actually does have cancer, which shocks Big Daddy. Big Daddy leaves the room shouting in shock. The guests come back, supposing Big Daddy has gone to bed. They tell Big Mama the truth about the health report, and she gets very emotional. She rejects the plan Gooper made for when Big Daddy dies and calls Brick her only son. She says it's Big Daddy's dream to have a grandchild from Brick that is. As much like his son as his son is like Big Daddy. Gooper and May take out legal papers made by his firm for the division of the estate after Big Daddy's death, favoring them due to Brick's alcoholism and Margaret's childlessness. Margaret then announces that she's going to have Brick's child, which makes Big Mama happy and Gooper and May surprised. Big Mama goes to inform Big Daddy of the news while May leaves with Gooper before confronting Margaret about her lie. Margaret locks up Brick's alcohol and tells him she won't give it back until he sleeps with her. She says she loves him, and Brick responds with a doubtful comment. Wouldn't it be funny if that was true? William's third act of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof was a bold move in theater drama as it was missing the main character, Big Daddy, who had faded with the end of the second act of the play. Therefore, the director Elia Kazan made Williams write an alternative third act for the Broadway premiere, which had Big Daddy's appearance. In this second third act, the script is also altered to suggest that Brick concedes with Margaret by sitting on the bed implying his character change. The characters grapple with their desires and often suppress their true feelings, leading to emotional tension and isolation. Maggie and Big Mama love their husbands deeply, but sadly, their husbands can't love them back in the same way. Maggie's desire for Brick is clear throughout the play, but Brick's avoidance and emotional detachment create a sense of repression in their relationship. Skipper loved Brick, but Brick didn't reciprocate. Big Daddy cares for Brick a lot, but Brick is too drunk to show love in return. Brick's alcoholism and emotional detachment isolate him from his wife and family, making him a symbol of loneliness. The theme of mendacity and deceit revolves around the character's tendency to lie and hide their true feelings or motives. In the play, Big Daddy accuses Brick of lying about the cause of his drinking to being disgusted with mendacity when in truth he is wrecked with guilt over Skipper's self-destruction. Brick lies to himself about the truth of Skipper and his relationship. Maggie frequently tries to manipulate situations by being dishonest such as her attempt to gain the major portion of the inheritance after lying about being pregnant with an heir. Everyone deceives Big Daddy about the truth of his health. The Pollitt family is filled with misunderstandings and lack of open communication. The strained relationships between Big Daddy and his sons, Brick and Gooper, and between Brick and Maggie, highlight the dysfunctional nature of the family. The sibling rivalry between Gooper and Brick appears to be one-sided as Brick does not engage in it and wins the parents' affection by being the golden child despite being a childless alcoholic. Big Mama's desperate attempts to maintain the appearance of a happy family, despite underlying problems, show the pressure to meet societal norms. The wives fruitlessly try to win the affections of their husbands. Brick is emotionally blackmailed by Big Daddy who grabs his crutch to force him to communicate. Brick's liquor is held at ransom by his wife until he conceives a child with her. Margaret also faces blackmail at the hands of the Pollitt parents. She to produce an heir to get financial stability.